Hello. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to create a custom visualization for use in the Lightning Data Visualization Server. The first thing to do is to make sure you have a server running locally. If you're not sure about how to do this, read the docs at lightningviz.org where various methods of running local servers are explained. I'm running mine in the left terminal here. To make sure it's working, navigate to localhost 3000, and if you see a page like this, it's working correctly. Now, to create a custom visualization, the first thing that you need to do is to create a new folder for it. I'm going to call mine Lightning Custom Example, and then navigate into that folder. Now, the next step is to install a couple of tools that Lightning provides so that you can quickly get up and running with your new custom visualization type. Um, this is a Yemen-based generator, so the first thing that you need to install is Yemen, which can be installed by npm with npm install-g yo. Yo is the command line tool. Um, I already have it installed, so I'm not going to run it. And then after that, uh, install the specific lightning viz generator. Once those are both installed, run yo lightning viz to start Yemen. This will ask you what you want it your module to be named. I'm just going to use the name of the folder. Then create a few files and install some dependencies. Once that's done, I'm going to open it in Sublime Text. Now, let's look through the folders here. The first is data. The important file here is sample.json. Um, you can put any example data set you want in here. Um, and this is used for developing and showing off the visualization when you're sort of expecting to preview it and you want some data to be there already. The node modules is just where uh, dependencies get installed. And the, sur the source folder is where you actually have all of your custom JavaScript. Um, finally, the last important file is package.json. This is where all of the metadata for your project goes. Now, we can look inside this file called index.js in the source folder and see what's going on. So at the top here, we're requiring something called a Lightning Visualization. This is the base visualization class that Lightning uses, and we're going to extend it with our own custom functionality. So here's where we're declaring the extend, um, and then these are the functions that we're overriding. I'll go through them one by one just quickly. At the top is get default options. This is where we want to provide sensible defaults um, if our visualization accepts any options via the API. For example, a lot of them use an option called zoom and set it to true by default. We're not going to use any options right now. Um, next is the init. This is where we want to put any code that should be run once at the beginning of the visualization's life cycle. Um, here we see that we can access a few variables. Um, this includes the width, the height of the container, um, the actual DOM node that we want to render to, um, the data itself, and any options that were passed in. Um, this options object gets filled out with uh, the defaults that you provide up here if they're not passed in by the user. Um, finally, there's the render function where we actually draw to the DOM. Um, format data is a convenience function that uh, will transform the data every time the user sends it in case you want to uh, define a different data spec on the client and on the server, for example. Then these last two are update data and append data. These get triggered by a WebSocket if the user tells the visualization to update or to append data to the end of it. This is how we do streaming. Okay, so the first thing that we can do is um, we'll just simply console.log whatever data comes in. This is really easy. Console.log this.data and we'll put it in the render function. Now, we actually need some data. Um, and where this is going to come from is the sample data here. Um, so this data thing, uh, it, should, it should be an object usually. Um, and we can just say key uh, and value. And so we'll expect that to be printed out to the console. Um, the next question is, how do we actually load it into Lightning? So the first step is to run something called npm link inside of the custom visualization folder. This tells NPM that this uh, module should be made available locally. 
And this is what our local server uses to preview it. So if we go to the visualization types page, click import, and then select local and preview. Once we're actually finished uh, writing the code, we can import it. And then type in the folder name, lightning custom example. You can see it loads up with the data here. And then if we open the Chrome Developer Console, we see that it console logged uh, the data. Now, note that this field here is live, so we can actually edit it. And it'll reinitialize the visualization. And you see it prints out value too. This will be much more useful um, once we actually start rendering to the DOM. So the next step is let's take a stab at rendering to the DOM. Um, just really simply, we have this.l available. Um, this is the DOM element, and we can set the inner HTML on it. Um, let's do json.stringify uh, this.data. Now, instead of seeing this data on the console, we would expect to see it up here where the visualization normally renders. Okay, there it is. Now, this is nice, but it's kind of a toy example. And when you're doing serious work, you usually end up using a third party library or two. So I'm going to show how to integrate that now. I was looking at something called chart.js earlier, and I thought that the uh, polar area chart would be a cool example to try to include. So the first thing that we need to do is actually install the dependency via npm using the save flag. Um, the save flag just tells it to automatically add this dependency to our package.json. So notice chart.js is in here now. Um, the next step is to include it in our code. Um, because everything's compiled with Browserify, we can just do this without worrying about downloading any files. npm handles this for us. So now we have this chart object, and if we go back to the documentation, we can look at the example usage. So this is what I would want to put in my render function now. Okay, let's look at this a little more closely. We want to create a new chart. We have something called a context. Um, and then we call the polar area function on it with data and options. Now, for now, let's ignore the options because we're just going to use the defaults. The data should be this.data. Um, and the context is something a little new. Uh, the chart.js library wants all the uh, charts drawn to a canvas and you have to provide the canvas context yourself. So see up here how they're getting the context of the canvas and then passing it down into the chart. So I'm just going to use some code from Stack Overflow to, in the initialization function, actually um, add a canvas node to the DOM. And I don't care about the ID, but I would like to set the width to this dot width so it's the correct width of the container and the canvas height, so it's the correct height of the container. Um, and then I don't want to append it to the body, I want to append it to this.l. Okay, so that happens in the init function. And finally, I want to get a reference to that uh, canvas context. So I can say this.context equals canvas.getContext2d. Uh, now here in my render function, instead of passing in ctx, I can just pass in this.context. Now I'll try to uh, refresh the page. OK, so something happens. We're getting a bunch of blank white space here. Let's inspect it. Um, there's no errors. And we have a canvas uh, element. But I think we're just not passing in the data correctly. So if you look down at the polar area chart, there's a very specific data structure that we want to use. Um, I have this here sort of pre-formatted, um, but data should always be an object, so I'm going to just call this values and paste it in. OK, so now if I refresh the visualization again, Hopefully the visualization will show up. The values showed up. Um, oh, but this should be values now. Right. 
and there it is. Okay, cool. Now notice, if I change that, it actually changes the value on the chart. Pretty cool. All right, so finally, before I'm ready to import it, I'm going to change the name in Lightning. Uh, the way to do this is to go into the package.json and look at this name field here. So there's two names happening. There's the name of the visualization and the name of the module. Um, Lightning always imports based on the name of the module, but can have a custom name inside once it's imported. So once it's been imported, I want to call it polar area. Now I'm going to go to import visualization from local and run a sorry, lightning custom example. Note this is what's in the name up here, and then hit submit. Now with the name polar area, it's been imported. This is really cool. Um, now I should try to use it with an API client. Let's try with Python. So I have an IPython notebook running on localhost 8888. Okay. And I'm just going to create a new notebook. Um, there are detailed instructions on lightningviz.org on how to use the Python client, so I'm just going to quickly walk through this. Um, import the library oh. and instantiate it locally in uh, IPython mode. Oops. Okay, it's done, it's connected. So normally we can do things like lightning.line and it'll show up. Um, lightning.scatter for example but there's no um, there's no polar area function so we use a special one called plot that takes data and then takes a type and this is where we put polar area so we just need the data now and if we just go back to sample data we can actually just copy and paste this well, almost Boy, eh. That looks better. Data equals. Okay, that ran. Now we're talking. Okay, so now we can say lightning.plot data type equals polar area. And there you have it. Polar area chart hooked up completely with Lightning. We can even change these values from inside of Python. So if we rerun this data, then I can replot it and see new data. Pretty cool. So the last thing that I want to discuss is how you can actually share this code with other people. Um, once you're happy with this, uh, you can go back into your custom viz folder and uh, you can publish this to npm. Now if you don't already have an npm user account you want to run npm add user and this will let you create a username and password for npm. You need to be uh, authenticated with the registry. Uh, once you've done that you can say npm uh, version patch and that'll bump the version number um, 0.0.1. If I did, for example, version minor, it would have been 0.1.0, or major, it would have been 1.0. Um, but now that I have a new version, I can say npm publish, and this will publish to npm using, again, the name of the module. So this should now be available on npm. And if I look it up, I can see yes, it's right here. So now anybody can take this name, go to their own Lightning server, visualization types, import, 
from the registry now and use that module name. Um, so hopefully people start sharing and publishing all sorts of interesting visualizations. I'd love to see what people come up with. Okay, thank you and stay tuned for my next video.